Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another RC Conspiracies. Today, we're going to be talking about all the stuff that I've missed out on while I've been gone and working. Working for a living. So if you're joining us at a later date and it's not live, we'll put the time code down in the description. You can uh, click on that. It'll take you right to when this whole thing gets going. Till then, sit tight. Everybody here is going to be about a minute till we get the splash screen up. going on brody from missouri i might be heading to st louis this summer things stay jesse's rc's from california yay california Silhouetted images and industry teasers are finding their way into our homes and invading our minds. Ah! Their calculated information is delivered to feed our addiction for radio controlled frequencies. It's an RC conspiracy. But we are on your side, cracking the RC code, because the truth is out there. Welcome to the RC Conspiracies Podcast. Get your decoder rings ready and put on those tinfoil hats because your fearless leader is here. Please welcome your host, the lead RC conspiracist, Tony CC. Tony CC. Welcome to the RC Conspiracies Podcast. Hey, what is going on, you guys? Welcome to another RC Conspiracies Podcast. Sorry, we didn't have one last week. I was out of town, and it's really hard to throw one of these things when I'm in a hotel room and um, just don't have anything ready. So uh, we decided to just cancel it and uh, take a little break. And I was super busy anyway. I don't even think I was back to my hotel room when it started or would have started. So I guess it's a good thing in hindsight that we uh, hadn't gotten it going. It's been crazy, crazy, crazy around here. I'm actually just opening some stuff up that came in the mail here. The... Uh, Oh, these are the new um, G2100C Spectrum Smart Batteries, 5,000 milliamp hour, 100C. These will be great for um, World Finals with my LMT. All righty, guys. What's going on? Blake is here from Pennsylvania. Barry from Illinois. couple from Illinois. Uh, one dozen different combos with the Copperhead, says Raquel. That's something I am excited about. If you guys have followed this channel for any length of time, period of time, you know that I run a lot of Castle Creations systems in my trucks. I do a lot of Sidewinders. Uh, we do the Mambas, and um, I just I haven't actually had one go bad on me yet. So, knock on wood, right? Don't want to start having that. But um, really excited about the Copperhead. We'll talk a little bit about that. Riff Raffs RC is in the house. How is it going? Twisted Crawler, Big Papa from Ohio, 858 Ryan from Illinois. People showing up from all over the country. Another Ohio YSU printmaking is back. He wants more torture of watching this. <laughs> all right. So, um, yeah, there's 
let's go through some of the stuff that we we talk about typically um new stuff on the channel i've had a few videos recently i just posted one speaking of the spectrum smart batteries gen zace did send me some of their 8000 milliamp hour uh bashing batteries that are right here i ran them in my mojave and i ran that thing on 6s two of these it was awesome lots of runtime actually too much runtime because i uh, i had to stop and let the motor cool but basically i got two full runs or what i would consider to be two full runs out of uh one battery set so that's pretty cool i'm gonna say um to to have that much runtime almost i mean it's not quite but it's almost doubling the 5000 milliamp hours right so a little bit less but yeah it was awesome curtis d is in from iowa brian taft from durham north carolina brian you're not that far from here you're not far at all az froggy so you're not late at all we just got started he, we know where he's from az right um so uh on this page and many people's other people's i'm not going to say just mine uh there's this new store feature and you can pick up some cool merch if you want uh, from Teespring. If you actually go to the From Spring store, uh, you can actually find that we have more stuff on there. We've got the That's Not Scale shirts um, as well as other stuff. You can actually just click on the CCXRC products up in the top left and see all of them. The RC bashing is not a crime. That's one of my favorite ones. In fact, I need to order another one because I lost my shirt somewhere. Smoking Motors, Broken Axle Club, all of the good stuff is on here. Uh, here's the Broken Axle Club. I actually wore that one when I was on my trip. So it's actually nice and clean and sitting on my bed waiting to go in the closet tonight. So um, that is it from the uh, kind of little sidebar thing. Riff Raff said he just got a shirt the other day. Sweet. There's also CCXRC ones, the out of control ones. A lot of people like that one with the skull holding the remote control. My wife doesn't actually like that one at all. <laughs> um. So news-wise, guys, there's something coming. It's pretty obvious what it is, I think, uh, from Axial on 5621. We don't know exactly how they're going to unveil it, but it says uh, some assembly required right here. The picture, I mean, it's pretty much, it's a rift. Um, and I'm guessing, I don't know. So people in here are saying hopefully it's going to be cheaper than uh the capper was because the, the capper ready to run basically had all the the extras that normally would come in something that they would do as a kit version with the metal links and all that but the price difference wasn't enough for some people i guess so they were complaining that well might as well buy the ready to run you get so much extra for the for the hundred bucks difference in price um so that's what I've, i'm i was reading in some of the comments here but I'm gonna, I don't know if some, what says some assembly required makes me think it's going to be like the LMT where it's pre-built, but you put electronics in it. So it'd be kind of like a roller and you'd assemble a few things. What do you guys think? Is it, is it going to be a full on kit or is it going to be cage and stuff assembled or what do you, what are you thinking? What's going on tank? Oh, RC girl showed her kit before she was supposed to. <laughs> it's a kit. Is it a full build kit? Or is it partially assembled? Because the sum assembly makes me think it's not a full on kit and that it's basically slap in your own electronics and go. But I did not see the leak. I hate when stuff like that happens. Poor her. She just that uh, RC Propaganda says she showed her kit before she's supposed to. That's always a bummer. Is this the right phone number for this page? Everybody sees it now. Thank you, Facebook. Um... Yeah, so I, I mean, that's when I'm guessing it is. And I've heard people saying that the cage is going to be like a light gray color too or white, which would allow people then to dye it, which is kind of nice. So if it was a light color, you can pretty much dye it whatever you want. 
you guys are commenting. Tony knows he is sandbagging us, keeps a good secret. Totally not, man. Do not have one of these. I can say that. Um, <laughs> so I would have kind of probably just uh, kindly avoided your comment there, Propaganda, if I did have something up my sleeve. All I've got up my sleeve right now is sweat because it's getting really humid here. Just rained. Yeah, you do need a big pot to die a cage, or you just do it in a bucket and you pour in hot water. Um, but it'll work. So um that is kind of one of the things that I saw. And you guys are gonna have to tell me. I mean, I missed, I mean, I'm out a whole two weeks. Like I was not doing much online. Um, I was doing work stuff. Uh, on the job I was doing, plus I had the other contracts that I was working on. So I was editing stuff in the evenings. And then I tried to edit. Um, I did the Raminator video at an airport at like seven in the morning. And then I did um, the bashing video with the Mojave was one night at a hotel. Anyway, it was just craziness uh, how much was going on. And so I basically was getting online to post stuff. And that was it. So I, uh, I've missed a whole lot of, a whole lot of stuff, but it's good to be back. I, I'll be honest though. It's really hard to jump back in. Um, it, you feel really disconnected and it's a weird feeling when you do feel so connected, um, that it, it it's hard to get that start back. So, uh, I did something different and i decided to get back to something that i i wasn't doing before and that was i grabbed my sin racing b50 off the shelf because i've been wanting to run that so much and i'm like if anything will get me excited right now this will i mean i know i'm geeked about the uh the lmt stuff um but just something different to kind of re-ground me outside of all the competitions and stuff that I knew I had to do. Cause that was the thing. And, and probably it was a good thing because, and so actually tonight guys, RC Amigos macho monster crunch judging is going to be going on, on the competition that we did uh, again, that he's been doing over on Instagram and pulling a bunch of people together to do these monster jam freestyles. I think it's tonight that they're doing it with the judging and all that at like midnight my time so 9 p.m pst but um yeah so the b50 i got back out um to just kind of get myself back in a groove and going again because i didn't take any rcs i literally uh, well actually one of my pelicans is there i've got bags of stuff that i've got three cameras sitting in that bag there and gimbals and i got two massive pelican cases with lighting and tripods downstairs and rock and roller carts and all that stuff is um still got to get through and unpack and do all that because i came back and jumped into stuff we had to get our rv we've had it scheduled to go in for maintenance today and we've ripped out the whole interior for it for trying to get it ready for this summer and we felt like we got sick every time we went into it i mean it's old it's 2002 um and so it's it's pretty beat that carpet's seen a lot of dirt and rvs and trailers leak a lot so it's probably got mold we just ripped it all out and so we ripped that out the couch out the chair out um one of the benches at the table and so i was having to find a way to mount this ikea couch we'd bought and finally figured out a way with angle iron and drilling and drill pressing and lots of work to get it ready so that it wouldn't be because we built the couch in the RV and then we had to drive it today to the dealer, not even a dealer, the repair guy. And um, we need it to be secured. So I figured all that out this weekend. Plus the, the competition, I had to get a run in for that. Um, at least one decent run. Um, anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it's been busy since I got back and getting in was a little difficult, 
but having the competition forced me. I mean, I had to do it uh, between Home Depot runs and stuff. I had to get an RC out and do it. So that was good. Propaganda, you're in this one, right? This is truth, an affordable version of the Kappa One Ace. It's pretty wicked. That would be really cool. I think I think RC propaganda is in the Macho Monster uh, contest as well. He's in the fifty second bracket. Okay, so we had sixty seconds. I don't know why there's a difference in how much time we had, but we had 60 seconds to fill, which is a lot longer than it seems to keep it running and do cool stuff. <laughs> um, luckily, the LMT does pretty well, so I'll give it that when you don't break it. And I'll say I break, I broke three rod ends, which I've talked about how great the rod ends are on the LMT and how they don't break like other trucks. Well, I'm finding a way now uh, that I'm bashing them way harder, and you can break those rod ends if you want. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it's been crazy. So we're back in, um, B 50 got it in Kevin Gibbs. I know you love that video. I saw your comment up there. Uh, SFL RC 24 RVs are as bad as a boat when it comes to maintenance. Yeah. One of the air conditioners died. Um, there's two of them in there and you really need to, to keep it cool. Cause they, they aren't very efficient. Um, Luckily, we're not paying for power when we're camping. It's somebody, <laughs> so we just run them both the whole time. Um, the uh, the heater was doing some weird um, auto, like the fan on it was just running all the time. There's just lots of little things. So they're going to deal with all that and hopefully not come. And the hail broke the upper um, covers and all that that go over your vents and all that and keep the rain from getting in. Anyway. Back to RC stuff. It's easy to get into some of the life stuff, but I will say I was on a two nine day shoot and almost two weeks. It felt long because that first day was like a 20 hour day or something getting up at 3 a.m. to uh, probably, yeah, 20 hour day getting up at 3 a.m. to go to the airport. And, um, but it was awesome. Hopefully I'll have some stories for that in the future. Uh, a lot of high profile interviews and interesting things so hopefully that i'll be able to talk about nothing rc related but very cool nonetheless um so moving forward with this the uh the macho monster crunch tonight at nine rc amigos check that out um the other thing that happened and you guys have all been talking about it uh, not a whole lot of posts about it over on the conspiracies group when I was gone, but the Traxxas slash truck, they dropped some more pictures and, um, it looks really good. I will give them that. I really, really like what they've done with it. Even the details here in the bed of it look really cool. So pretty, pretty cool. And lots of colors. I mean, they didn't wait. They're not like waiting and releasing new colors every month. They're just banging out six colors right from the get go. And I would probably, I would choose the green machine. That's me. The red lines, uh, they're all nice. I would probably choose the green machine. I like green like that. What are you guys' thought? Yeah, see, some people saying purple's dope. That was going to be the one I wasn't, like, most stoked about. I, I I like the red and the black and the blue, and I don't know what happened there. That was, like, craziness. But they did, I mean, the details on it are nice. I like the white lettering on the back of that a lot. And these look to me to be plastic molded pieces here. I don't know why it's doing that. That's nuts. The wheelie bar wheels look decent. Look at the little lugs in here. Pretty cool. 
And then they got the new transmission in which they did talk about their Pro Series Magnum 272R transmission. So metal gears in it. Torque control slipper clutch looks good. A lot of things look decent to me on it, honestly. All right, let's see what you guys are saying. You guys are all jumping in here. YSU wants a clear one. Riff Raff's purple. Look at all you purple guys. RC propaganda. What motor do you think they'll put in the drag slash? That's a good question. Or is it a new motor that'll run 2S for the leagues? Hmm? That's the question. Will this be geared to go fast? And be kind of league ready. RC Voodoo says definitely clear. Okay. Yes, this this is something I was laughing about. They gave us a ton of colors, and all I said is thank God they didn't do like a rock and roller or do one of the Traxxas paint schemes on on them. They left it classic, and uh, good on you for that one, Traxxas. They look good. They really look good. Yeah, see, purples, Brandon Timlin, RC for all, say, black. All right. I think uh, the lights have light buckets as well. Oh, that's nice. Yes, Brandon, if the, the black were flat. But the easy way to do that is you just you do it from the outside to make it flat black. Five hundred dollar price tag. It doesn't say Cush Drive. It's a slipper. But it may have a rubber piece there. I can't tell the in the pictures, but it does have metal geared sealed diffs. It looks good. Lane Teak says black all the way. SFL RC24. I like the white one as well. <laughs> RC Voodoo. I just can't get into drag cars. Just going straight for four seconds don't interest me enough to get one and make it fast and straight as possible. Yeah, and it's tough to actually get them going straight. There's so much tinkering. That's why I got out of drones. I was so tired of the tinkering to get rid of little shakes and vibrations and all that. I, you don't have to worry about shakes and vibrations when you're bashing. They're the fastest name in RC, right? And what do they say? Fastest on the street or something? What was their slogan for the drag slash? Looking for it on here. See if they have it. No, I don't see it in any of this. It's a bummer. I don't remember what the tagline was. I don't mind it. I... I'm kind of in the air. I have the low C one on order, but you know, when you have it ordered, you can always cancel ahead of time. They haven't shipped and they haven't built it yet. Uh, but I have three drag cars and I don't use them that often right now. And I actually have a custom drag chassis, but I need to get like a team associated stuff to put in it for a sniper chassis. So yeah, Dynamoose, what's going on, man? Quickest in the streets. Is that what it was? Quickest in the streets? That doesn't seem as cool. Texas drag slash. Let's pull up the email, see if I can find it. How long ago was that? Hmm. 
Nope, this is me. It's not what I wanted. I was trying to find a uh, quickest on the street. That's what it was. I don't have a page to drop that on. Shoot. See if it'll pull it up. I'm 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 failing on the attempts here. But it is quickest on the street. You were close. We'll give it to you. The judges say we can give it to you. How's it good? How's it going, Brian? How much for a central LMT? You mean the Sen B fifty? They were like three something, three twenty. Anyway, I like it, but I don't like it as much as the next product that was just announced. And I like this for several reasons. Uh, I am a big fan of the Castle Systems, but this brushless system, not only is the Copperhead a cool name, because uh, they're vicious, we got them here, but their logo is sick. <laughs> I just love it. So these are a new um, brushless censored system that sits right in there between the Sidewinder 4 and the Mamba X. And so uh, it gives you that nice low capability, low speed capabilities that you might want for a crawler system. And it's going to bring it in a lower price, which is really cool. Uh, it loses some of the functionality again, which especially for the crawling market, maybe I would think you might not need all the data logging and stuff that the Mamba X and all that gave you. I'd never look at that kind of thing. I know some bashers do. Um, I know that uh, ExoCage, he'll pull up the, those lists of things all the time. Uh, I don't. Typically, I'll go in and I'll set different settings on it uh, as far as speed ramping, things like that. But, um, yeah, they look really good. I like what they're doing here, and they've got quite a few options for them. They're 2 to 4S, and so... Yeah, I mean, they, they look like a great option for people that are getting into bashing. And especially with things like the Rift on the market, the Bomber, um, people that do some crawlers but want them to be faster and to kind of tear up rocks and all that. It gives you a lot more control on that low end. Uh, YSCU says the price seemed decent with the motor combos as well. I think it's so as well. I think the pricing was great. And really, you know, the feature sets of the Mamba might not be something that everybody needs. And so it's nice that they're willing to say, you know, well, we're making money off those people selling them things they don't need, which is, you know, that's cool with us. We're making the money. But I actually like their thought here in bringing a lower price option to the market. And I think it's great. Bottom of drag slash picture say pre-production prototype with optional accessories subject to change. Interesting. 120 for the ESC. Not a bad deal. I agree. That's not too bad. How's it going, Cody? But here's where they list kind of what motor combo you'd want to be using with the Copperhead 10. And then again, they do have the limited edition Copperhead as well, 10 here that they're talking about. I'm not sure what the difference with the limited edition one is. Is it this combo right here where you, the 3200? Or what's the difference in the limited one? See, this one is it would be without a fan on it. You took the fan off. Jeremy Kilburn was a Kilburn was a beta tester. That's cool. Oh, 
Okay, the, the limited edition one looks so cool. I think it's a different color. Okay. There's definitely this gray piece on the side, it looked like, here. I don't know if it has anything else going for it. But this, a 1412 3200 KV system, seems like it would be pretty wicked in uh, a rift or something like it. And that's what they're showing us, this limited edition one. None of the other ones run in that 3200 range. Interesting. Kale says the logo is cooler on the limited edition. Oh, it's like white versus like the copper color. Yeah, I see that. That's pretty cool. So definitely a different casing. And that's the one that this particular edition is the one that comes with the, uh, the 3200 4S capable one. And that would be perfect for a rift. So anyway, I'm excited about that. I'll have to get one of these on order. I I would like to get some more um, censored systems in some of my trucks that have been running the uh, the Sidewinder, particularly something like a uh, a rift kit maybe that I don't have propaganda, but I. Joe has been telling me I need to get one of these. So I, I have it on my list of wants. And that would kind of be if I got rid of the low C. Um, that might be something I'd look at instead of the drag car. Um, to the drag one was. So it's 400 bucks. So it'd be a. If the roller will probably be somewhere here or less, and then get the uh, the copperhead system to put in, that might be pretty cool. Chainsaw got a rift yesterday. Did you do um, orange or black? Yeah, the MT combo says for us, but it's also a bigger motor and a it's a fourteen fifteen and it's a twenty four hundred kV, so it's not the thirty two. Just a little bit different setup. So this is a 1412 32. Then you've got the 1415 2400, which will do for us as well. So many cool ones. Yeah, I do like the coloring on that. And then the black motor. Pretty mean looking. Um, you think Traxxas will partner with Castle again on the Slash like they did on the X01? I'm under the impression that the Traxxas motors may or may not be based off of Castle stuff anyway. From what I've heard. Don't know the full about that, but that's what I've heard through the grapevines from people. Um, maybe somebody in the chat knows that. I've heard that the blue can motors are just basically track or castle motors with the Traxxas variation of them. Kind of like everybody does hobby wing ones where they just put their branding on them. So like all the spectrum ones look very similar to hobby wing systems, but are called spectrum. They have a few things that they've been tweaked and, you know, they've got settings set up by the companies that they want. Savage flux was castle. Okay. Trying to think of who told me that it was the blue cans were or that Traxxas was running castle stuff. It could be completely wrong. So don't listen to what I say. 
it's all just conspiracy stuff. Anyone know what Axial is dropping tomorrow? Uh, it looked like the Rift, but like a kit version. And so you guys have said that it was leaked already on accident. Was it a kit or was it a roller? I didn't see. Did somebody say kit or roller? It won't. My comments won't scroll up far enough for me to see. Uh, Alex Rojo asks, am I going to Axial Fest, California? Um, currently I am not. Um, although <laughs> interestingly, I heard on, um, uh, scale news update that there's no camping at that one, which makes it tough for some people. I mean, you can get a hotel, but which is interesting. Cause I heard there was a ton of people that were just camping out in California these days. So I guess if you leave the actually designated camping areas you could probably just camp on the on the sidewalk if you wanted um but i'm not recommending that i just thought it was interesting <laughs> that you can't pay to camp but people are camping all over the place I uh, think the Copperhead would do in an LMT. Um, I think so. Yet that monster truck one. What does an LMT weigh? Those are up to 6.5 pounds. Maybe not. I don't know about that. I don't even remember what the LMT weighs. They're heavy. <laughs> and Brandon, they do it everywhere else in California. Yeah. So Mike Burgess says, I'll definitely grab a roller. Yeah, I don't know if it's a Rift kit or if, if it's a roller. I wish I would have seen the sneak peek. Um, So what's the weight on one of these guys? Let's see if it says, man, I really like these V100 Camaros. I'm pretty much just the warm-up also right now, waiting for... Uh, What's their names to get kicking over on uh, RC Amigos? Um, does it have weight product specs? Wait, 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 wait. Ten pounds without battery. Nah. <laughs> These. Uh, nah. Not gonna be doing it. All of these are six point five. You're gonna need a much bigger setup. Yes, Raquel, the V100 is a great price point. So I don't know what Kyo shows up to, Barry King, but I will say that I saw this, and I really like how it looks. So they've kind of done up the, uh, the Forerunner here. Roof racks and all that, they've kind of taken it next level. Look at the heater lines, everything. It looks so good. I love the paint scheme on it. This was April 21st, so this is, you know, two weeks ago now. But, man, is it cool. Super duper cool. That and they were running this old school F1 as well. It's more just a trick thing. 
So we've got this 20th anniversary uh, Toyota GR Supra. I actually saw one of these Supras today. Really nice looking. Um, Not this one. This is super cool. They're taking it easy. They don't want to wreck it, I'm sure. one eight f 2004 ferrari f run f1 rare and working condition kit looks so good so yeah i don't know what else they've got new going on um i know that i'm still waiting to see what some of the cross stuff is that they've got coming out with that new truck looks sweet haven't heard when that's going to drop somebody else was teasing something that looked like an escort is it charisma? No. Who was that? Hey, Pooh's charisma. What's the fastest drag RC out of the box I can buy? Caveman 820. 100. Uh, currently, the only drag RC out of the box you can pretty much buy right now is the Team Associated. Um, but Losi has one that's supposed to drop this month and the Traxxas one is as well. And it'll be interesting to see who's is faster out of the box. And I'm sure it's, they're both dying to know how fast each other's is as well. <laughs> I know I would be if I were one of the companies and honestly, if I'm a, a buyer and I hadn't already ordered one, which again, I can cancel. I don't love the truck drag as much as I do that Camaro is so sweet, but the Traxxas setup is pretty cool looking as well. So it's hard to say, um, but who's going to be faster, like straight out of the box. I'm super curious. You're going to have to wait, man. It's this month. You should know very soon. Who's is faster. Losi drag car can go 60 miles per hour on 3S. So 2S would probably be, what, 52-ish? Making guesses. 50? Um, yeah, so that's what they've got. Cross, what did they have going on? Oh, speaking of cross, um, I'm not sure. I, I was scheduled to go to the Fur Babies crawl next weekend, and I'm not sure if I'm going to make it or not. We've had, um, several car issues, and we thought we had it fixed, uh, but it's not fixed. So we got to get the minivan into a dealer now. And I don't know what the costs are going to be. I don't know if I'm going to have the truck to drive down there or the, the van to drive down there with the boys. So I know that's what I'm wondering. It said it was going to be this month, but we don't know when. RC Sailors did a speed test on the low C drag car. Again, I don't remember what they did on 2S. But these, I think this is the new one by Cross. And it looks really good. Especially their paint job. I just wish that they sold it like that, ready to run. Just give me that right there. It's amazing. But there's a lot of man hours into that. <laughs> know that for sure so yeah um yeah kevin gibbs life happens sometimes so we're we're weighing it i'd love to go because it's right by my brother's house i mean like literally on the way to stone mountain he's maybe 30 minutes from there so he moved and i haven't seen his new place yet so i was hoping that we we're gonna get to go there but um yeah What's going on, Javier? Oh, you texted me too. And I haven't responded yet. I will have to respond still. I 
I got this new camera mount that's really cool, or phone mount. And um, it's cool because it's like a snapback. It's called O Snap. And it's like a loopy or whatever, but it's got this cool plate on the back that mounts to a bunch of devices like this that just really lock it so it doesn't twist or anything and hold it in place um and there's a really awesome one for the the desk and this this is a magnet too this ball on it and everything it's super cool but the magnet on this side of it is so strong and it's actually charges too when you put it on here um, but you can actually change out these pieces if you don't want it to be the charger base. You just want it to be a stand. So um, anyway, it's really cool how it just locks on here and then it charges while it's sitting on my desk. The problem being, I didn't clean the phone well enough before I stuck the piece on here. And it works great for everything except... Um, it's so strong on this base that uh, it sometimes will pull the sticker right off the back now because I hadn't cleaned it and really stuck it on very good, which is my fault. Should have used some alcohol or whatever on it to get all that residue off my fingers off there. So anyway, that was me fixing that. Does it have a fan mount? It goes on the vent of your car. That's what you mean. But it's uh, it's an interesting design for sure. And if you want to put it in a case, you can always just pop this off of here. And then the, uh, the metal piece will stay on the back and then you just stop, drop it in a case. It's pretty cool. So it's like a bunch of little magnets. Oh, snap is the company really cool. Anyway, that's a little random off topic thought. <clears throat> no limit world finals is coming up. We're going to be there doing the, uh, monster trucking. Um, speaking of monster trucking, we had a big storm kind of blow through here it lasted for about 15 minutes today. So we had hail what three weeks ago, four weeks ago, hail. Crazy, crazy amounts of hail. Um, this week we had crazy wind, and it actually today lifted my wooden ramp up in the backyard into the air. And I'm watching it out the window, and it just slammed it down on the black ramp, the plastic, like multiple ramps I've screwed together, slammed it down on that, and it just broke into three pieces, four pieces, killed it. So I'm going to have to see if it's repairable or not. I was watching it like, oh crap. <laughs> How's it going, Rizzy? Says you're leaving the RC world. That's a bummer, man. I'm getting more and more involved in it. Really, really enjoying it as a hobby um, and just kind of a, a release. I will say the competition thing got me a little bit. I was getting a little frustrated with myself because um, trying to do too much. I was trying to... Um, film but also time it so i'd know how much more time i had and run it and and a whole bunch of stuff and it was getting really frustrating so uh, <clears throat> finally my son came over and when he started doing the timing the first run was awesome and then three more good ones decent ones i don't remember which one i chose but of those three or four that we did with him there but it was like three or four of them that i went the whole 60 and over um and had a had pretty good runs so i think i there's one of them that was really cool but it had too many like one that they see can't roll over and it kind of felt like a rollover but with the lmt nothing's a rollover you can almost always save it so <clears throat> it felt like an unfair advantage so i didn't use that one even though it was like double backflip to hit the ground flip flip and then kind of went on its lid and then pulled out of it with the front wheel that's pretty cool but um i didn't use that one i think that one is actually over on the ccxrc extras if you want to watch that run it's like a 59 second run 
Might even be the one where the wheel blew off at the end. I don't know. I had several decent ones that I didn't end up using. I've been posting them different places for people. So summer's approaching. Spring is upon us. What are you guys getting ready to do? What are you planning to do RC wise this spring, summer, as you have better weather, especially you northerners who haven't been running RC all winter like we have, or you've been running it differently, um, or maybe you've been locked up because of COVID and restrictions are starting to lighten a lot of places. What are you guys doing? <laughs> riff raff i'm too embedded to leave maybe an occasional break yeah i was starting to get a little crazy after uh not not running them the past week when i was filming and um it is interesting because i've been doing a lot more film project stuff and got me buying gear again um so i definitely won't be spending some money on rc stuff for a little bit not like i was because uh that you know that money went there plus the car repairs that i have to do and trying to save up money for axial fast driving and repairs that i want to do at the jeep before we go oh you got the t-bone ramps that's cool riffraffs those are cool looking for sure AC Froggy's just a new light kit. Whoops, missed it. It moved. New light kit in the King Hauler cab. They finished the Beast 2 build up. Kevin Gibbs, you're going to Stone Mountain, Nelson Ledges, and Badlands. Wicked, man. Well, I'll definitely be at. Well, you can't say anything's definite. I was definitely going to Stone Mountain until the car stuff started happening. So the other ones are in the shop right now because of the, um, the hail and the, uh, the damage that happened there. So they're in a collision shop right now. Mike Burgess says racing, no prep almost every weekend. That's cool. RC enthusiast. That's right. Break stuff. I've got projects I want to get to. I'm not sure which ones I'm going to hit up first. Is anybody going to the Axial event in Nevada? Nevada. Uh, on the 15th. It's called... What's it called? I should remember it. The Silver State Scale Challenge. Yeah, no way I would remember that. That's that. Speed Vegas. Anybody go into that one? It says uh, no need to sign up. Just show up. Three runs for ten bucks. Dash for dollars. Issued LV Scalar designed course. Uh, it is on May 15th at 10 a.m. at Speed Vegas. And I'm wondering with the competition part, if you're paying and you're running whatever they have there, or if you bring your own cars. Three runs, ten bucks. It's their first one, first ever. I don't know exactly what it is. Like the Silver State Scale Challenge doesn't. Is this going to be rifts or is it going to be crawlers? Is that a speed place, Speed Vegas? And it's a dash for dollars. 
issued LV scalar design course. I'm going to guess that's kind of like a rock bouncer thing. Here we go. Getting ready to build my GMade GS02F Buffalo. Heck yeah, the best crawler on the market. There's a lot of opinion in that that post there, Paul. <laughs> no kit compares. Yeah, Earl, I don't know what it is. I mean, they got a crawler showing here on this, so it's curious. Maybe it's a really long course. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> Paul says, yep. Well, who's going to be checking out? Let's go over and check out um, RC Amigos on Instagram. Um, they've got the uh, whole bunch of stuff here. They got some good sponsors going into this uh, event as well. Here's the uh, the Hefe class is uh, RC Addicted ninety eight. Myself Overkill RC. We know he throws down. Um, Bitch and Bodies nine one six Mini Jam, Jalen Outlaws of Motorsports RC. ZWS Hobbies and Mini Jam Chase. And those guys are throwing down really well too. Everybody in this class could pull something big out of their hat. That's for sure. Here's uh, the Mysterios class, and that's uh, Oz Monster RC, Kodiak 21 Creations, Dozer Power 2305, Scale Rod Garage, Lily RC. Outlaw, Outlaws of Motorsports RCs. I think that's its son. RC Propaganda, Trailer Trash RC, and Vehicle City Monsters. So this is uh, a 40-second freestyle. Oh, no, this is talking about the kids' class. Over here. Never mind. And then they have a kid's class. Okay, here we go. Black Ops, that's a good idea with the hot glue. I might try that. Um, somebody's saying, what are your thoughts on the Arma Infraction? So the Arma infraction is amazing. <laughs> so it's a felony. Both of them are pretty wicked rides. Um, out of the box, they just tear it up. That did not pull up anything Arma related. What was that? Here we go. And they have really cool paint jobs. So I think you can't go wrong with these. Um, the handbrake is really cool. I like the truck look on these, whereas, you know, I'm not really into the drag truck as much. I think this is really cool. Um, the felony is awesome, but the different size wheels in the front and rear are not being able to rotate and things like that provides to be a little bit tricky with those. Um, I feel like you get a little bit more for your buck with the infraction. I feel like it's even the body's a bit stronger without being so many pieces. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on it. I really like it. The V2 is amazing. I would like to see you, Earl Moorhead, get a, uh, a limitless for a Vegas drag strip. That would be really cool.
Gucci skunk is telling you he thinks it's the best ever. Uh, you can't find that event. I don't have a link. It was just on their Facebook page. If you scroll down. You missed my dirt runs oh, with the infraction. I'm going to get it back out there. Um, I've been having, I haven't been out to their track recently because rain has been one, a big factor. Um, and then two, I need to get my low C five T fix. The, the five T itself isn't a problem. The problem is the muffler we put on it or the pipe, the tuned pipe. It wasn't fitting over the exhaust on the, the muffler or on the engine itself. And it was only like half on. And then the piece, the rubber gasket over it was like torn and it was just leaking and it just didn't have power. It wasn't any more powerful than the stock muffler. So um, I was trying to take it off and the screw that was used to bolt it to the engine was way too big. I think the, the size of it, it felt like it was forced in. Cause it didn't budge and it actually, I mean, for how big the bolt was, it snapped right off. So, um, I have to now drill that out or I have to buy a whole new, whatever plate that is on the motor. It's a kind of a headache or just buy a new motor or engine. I, I don't know. I'm just kind of miffed by it all and just want to get a different pipe and thing that mounts easier and just drill out the old one and, put a bolt through it. If I have to, if I lose the threads, just put a bolt through and a nut on the side. And I don't know. So, uh, we can race it there if there's a class for sure. Yeah, we could race it. And, and the owner of the track actually bought my old one that he traded it for me for the pipe that I'm having issues with, um, right now. So I don't blame him for it. I just, uh, it's, it's slipped and it's meant for it. It's just whatever reason it's giving me issues. So all I was trying to do was take it off so I could put a new piece of rubber over it. I bought a new gasket you could put on and it just turned into a big problem and it's just sitting there in my garage now in pieces. And I've probably lost now screws and bolts. So kind of frustrated by it. And when I get that way with something, I just let it sit. So that's where the, uh, that is. And I went to just buy a Bartle on pipe and they were all sold out. So I got to find something to do. Part of me is like, just buy a whole new Bartle on system and put it all in there and just scrap everything that was in there. But that's money. <laughs> that's some money right there to do that. So I do have uh, a new motor and fan mount for the um, the Vortex. I got off of uh, eBay the fan mount and the fan assembly, and then I got the motor from uh, Jenny's RC. So I have that ready to fix up and get running again, which I really am stoked about because that car is wicked fun. Um, and then I also, from Jenny's, got the already built drive shaft. So that's the one thing about the 3s lineup i don't care for is the like the drive shafts that come out from the diffs um the way that they sell the pieces for those and when something part of it breaks i just want to go and buy a freaking assembled drive shaft and just replace the whole thing but it's all in like pieces and it doesn't have the metal parts and so like the hub part that actually goes through isn't part of the axle and so that's a separate thing. And then you got to build it. And I'm just like, screw this. I, I'll get it built from Jenny's RC. And I'll have four of them set, ready to go if I break anything else. So it's little things like that that drive me crazy in the hobby. Um, like you think you have the fix and then you get home and it's not all the parts you need. And you got to go back and buy more. And um, I like it when you can just buy a, a drive shaft. Like most cars, you break your drive shaft. You just go buy one that's assembled. You take out the grub screw pins, put a new one in, and you're good to go. Put the bearings over the hub. 
slap it in there. These aren't like that, I don't think. Maybe they do have it that way as well. That's not what they were selling me um, at the the shop. And I was like, I'm not going to build this. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll find a different way to do it. Maybe uh, Earl knows more about that. Bartolone is close to me. I can't get him to respond, says Earl. Dude's probably, they're so busy, I'm sure. So here it is. Let's just pull up the Vortex. We'll see what they, they sell it as. So parts, replacement parts. Shock bodies apart. Shock bodies apart, not fully assembled. And I know some people don't want to spend the amount for the whole thing built. They'd rather just buy whatever part they need. Like here's just little spring perches and rod ends for shocks, which that actually is a good thing to sell separately. Just like I want the rod ends for the low C to just be in a, ba a you know baggie of 12 at this point. <laughs> I just need like to buy up stock in them. Actually, I've got the Vitavon links coming to put on, on the bottom, so, so I should be good there. So I'm looking, I'm looking. So here's the wheel axle. So this is the part that I need that slides into the drive shaft because it broke off. And the drive shafts are, then you need to get this wheel hex. And here's the drive shafts. So you got to buy this. And then you got to buy so that's 19 bucks for that set of two. What am I doing? Then you've got to buy these for nine bucks. And then you still need whatever screw or bolt will hold those into the, the axle themselves. So you'd have to pull up that part number. Then you need the pin that goes through this. Does that come with the hex? I think it does. No, it doesn't. So you got to buy these pins. You got to buy these hexes. Anyway. I got assembled ones coming, <laughs> or they're here actually. Call it good. Real Moorhead, maybe upgraded parts as assembly. Yeah, let's look at that. Which I didn't think to do. I like the ability to buy things separated as well. There's certain things I would want separated. Like to be able to buy pins that you use for your hexes and all that wheel hex, but CVD wheel axle. So they have these CVD slider ones. These are for the Mega BLX. These are their newer style that are a little more expensive, but that's not bad. I mean, by the time I build the other ones, that's not bad. So did they have the rears? Or 
But you just use these for front and rear. These are things I don't know. And there's no real dis specs. At least on some of the ones, they'll tell you which cars they go for. And maybe that's over on the uh, Arma site. Of which cars they work with. Anyway, not to be negative about it, but <clears throat> it's a little bit frustrating. With some of that stuff when the people that are parting them out have it together and it's just easy and i know that they don't like the part out stuff i'm sure but it makes it easier at times they just go to ebay and get a parted out piece that's already built same with the fan having to buy the fan assemblies and then the the heat sink and all that separate you know you go on ebay and somebody's got it all ready together you just slide your motor in seen a guy on facebook that had his vortex on 8s yikes Riff Raffs is pretty compact for a 3S. Got mine the other day, but got to do some things to it before I can run it. I really like the sizing of it. I think it's a, a wicked fun truck. Um, And actually, that one doesn't have any broken sh drive shafts or anything. Uh, it's just I finally, after all the abuse I've given the big rack, broke one of the um the axle stubs off. And technically, I probably just pulled the screw out, and I could probably put a new screw in. I don't know. It's just easier to buy a new one. Because then if it's just, if it's stripped and you do it again, you waste all that time and it rips out for like 10 bucks, I'd rather put another one in. Torture RC. Yeah, they're small. I mean that whole lineup of 3S aren't huge. It's it's definitely low and compact for sure. But yes, Earl's right. Parts are hard to find right now. It's not even about it being out of stock. It's just about not having the option to buy the completed one. That's a little bit of a bummer. Those kind of things I just think, you know, like the Traxxas ones, you break one, you buy one, you stick it in. Um, let's see, like a Praxis slash drive shaft. Yeah, like this. Ten bucks. Already got this stuff installed. Thread lock on it. Slide them together. Stick it on. You're good to go. Just a single. You don't even need to buy a pack of two. Because usually when you break them, you're only breaking one. So awesome sell it in one complete boom winner what about say what would be close to it like a rustler maybe the same thing <laughs> yeah several of them here the front one 10 bucks complete. You know, rear here, extreme heavy duty, 12 bucks. That's all I'm saying is I wish that they had an, an option like this. Other than doing this, going here and saying, now they are sold out. I know that. Did I pass them? Here. So you have 31 for four of them. Front and rear. Already assembled. Put them together. Or 
put a grub screw in, stick them in, you're good to go. That's what I was looking for. It was just a single one off or two already assembled in a, a pack like this that they didn't have. Unless you guys know, <laughs> and I'm missing something, which has happened a lot. Let me tell you, I miss a lot of things. And a lot of it is the rush of just life. You know, I'm just, I don't have a lot of time. And between run videos, you know, doing the running, having fun with it, with my kids, uh, building stuff, fixing stuff, doing the videos, which is really the longest part of it all. Um, to sit here with this many vehicles and several broken at one time to try and go down the line and find all the different parts that I need to put together just a little drive shaft like this. That's when, that's why it's been sitting in my garage for a month broken is just like, Nah, sorry. I'll get. I'll eventually. I'll get to it when I'm missing it that much. But right now, I'm not. And what's cool is I bought four of them, and so if I break one on the vortex, I've got extras now. Um. I'm trying to read what you guys are saying. I missed a lot. Uh, all right, Kevin Gibbs, man, take care. Uh, probably a little late for that. You're probably gone. A good night, man. So, Joe, wh which part do you mean? Because buying them separate costs a third less. In this case, it doesn't because if you buy the parts separately, I've got to buy. It's not technically separate because I got to buy two of the plastic drive shafts, a separate kit of the, the axle stub, which has two as well. And so that was going to be like 28 bucks or something. And so I got four of them over at Jenny's RC complete and built for 32 bucks. But you might've been talking about something else and I'm, I'm not... I'm not following the conversation well. Yeah, so uh, Earl says definitely fun to run everyone uh, 3S line together all in one place. Really shows how well they all, all are. Yeah, it's one of my favorite lineups. So I'm making a little gripes, you know, because you have to gripe about things in order for people to be interested. <laughs> the news has taught us that, right? Um, the cars themselves are really awesome for what you get for the cost. Uh, and we beat them up way harder than we should. And so we do have repairs every once in a while. The Sen 3S lineup, man, we beat those things up really hard and have very minimal damage to them because the bodies help protect them more and the bumpers and all that. But yeah, those things are beat up, broken like bumpers and <laughs> we just keep running them. Uh, I use the wide max plastic axles on a standard max, cut them down and open end faces. Okay. Huh. I was watching overkill. RC was bashing that 4s stampede. That looked really cool. What's going on. Kurtz RC. Um, have you tried the newish? Traxxas middle drive shafts. I haven't. Torture RC says if you click on the notify me link on sold out items, you get an email in a day or so saying it's available. Oh, that's cool. I um what I actually did is uh I just went to a different one because they were all the same uh and grabbed whichever ones worked because these work on all of them perfect fit on the big rock granite set and typhon so i just went to one that wasn't as popular and i don't remember which one it was at this point um and grabbed yeah i think i went here and just found drive shafts and uh bought them 
because some of the cars, you know, a lot of people just go right to the name that they own. They don't realize that they work with multiple things. And so I think I actually got them for like a granite instead of a big rock because the big rock is really popular right now. And it should be, it's, it's one of the best cars I've ever driven for 330 bucks. Um, the control is amazing on it. Durable. You know, we've pounded that thing and it just keeps taking it. So anyway, I just kind of did this until I found one or I went to, you know, maybe just go to the granite and see. It was something 3S, set in 3S maybe. That one sold out. There was only a couple left when I snagged it. Nope, here they are. So the granite has them. So perfect fit on BLX, Big Rock, Crew Crab, Granite, and Sentin. So that's what I did. It says Traxxas on here too for some reason. But honestly, I only need this end part. You know, I could use this other part that's still on the other one. What's going on, King Stoic? Guessing that's a uh, Stoic the Brave thing, maybe? Earl Moorhead, my big rock just won't die. I know, right? What's going on, big head? Uh, hey, Nicholas says, hey, we do a video on how to change the steering percentage from 100% to 85% to 88% on the remote for the primal raminator. Um, I can look into that. I would want to make sure I'm doing it right first because if you jack that up, you can burn out some servos. So um, I'll probably try and reach out to somebody there and see if I can look. FaceTime with them and make sure I'm doing it right uh, before I would give that kind of information out. So a lot of responsibility in how to videos. I don't want to be responsible for burning up dual fifth scale servos on a Raminator, but my Raminator is running great. And I will say um, it's been running real good recently. Uh, pronounced stock. It's, it's half my last name. Oh, okay. I was thinking it was from uh, the Dragons movies. How to Train Your Dragon. Anyway, I think we've covered all the new stuff. I want to get a little break in here before I go and watch the stuff over. And I never actually went over there. Um, over on RC Amigos. These guys, if you go through um, on any of these posts, he's got links in here to the competitors, and you can click on their different Instagram pages. Here you can see, like, the practice run that Mini Jam RC was doing. They've got a really cool scale monster truck course in their backyard. That's really, really cool. Lots of opportunities for hits and things with it. So there's his wicked. They've got some really nice looking trucks as well. The monster energy lineup. I'm going to go back. Maybe they've got it here. No, they don't have it. I'm going to grab a different link off of here. Just show a couple of the competitors. Give them a little highlight on here. But if you just go to RC Amigos, because this is not going back for some reason, and you click on one of his videos about it here, about the event, he's got 
everybody listed. I know RC uh, Overkill RC. A lot of you guys know him. Was showing some of his practice stuff. This with the double front flip to some kind of nose pick cartwheel to backflip the moonwalk here. Pretty wicked stuff. That front flip though is really epic. Um, what else we got? CRC propaganda. Maybe he's got some run footage going. Doesn't look like it. None of his testing. Who else did I see that definitely did? I know Outlaw did. He's got his track set up real nice. So this was a fun smash he did. Tequila bottle. It's all Cinco de Mayo kind of theme. Which is really smart of him to add a theme to it. It means that you have to uh, film it after the announce, after they announce what thing ha element has to be in the video. That way, we can't use like old runs that we had that were really good. That was a good uh, tequila smash. Let's see who else we got in here. Grab somebody here. Trailer trash. He was. Uh, Getting some cool stuff going on out here. Big air flip. Nice air control on it. Anyway, so definitely go check out. And they're going to be doing the um, the judging. Uh, I believe it's tonight at midnight Eastern, 9 Pacific time. Let's see if I've got any of mine on here I can show. I've got one of my longer runs on here for sure. This is what my truck looked like when I was done. So it's a busted rod end on the link. Um, ripped out the shock. Lost the bump stop. And I broke the uh, the sway bar. The little arm, the, the plastic metal one that gets the grub screw to hold it in place. That broke. So some definite carnage. In fact, I broke three rod ends in all of the shooting, and I also broke the uh, wheelie bar the rest of the way. So definite carnage. So it looks like this is the run video I have. As a little teaser. It was decent. It was full speed the whole time. It was all power. And it kind of shows how quick the truck is. But we get getting a lot of dust back there. So that's the ramp over there. That that wooden ramp is uh I'll do this little move off it. I think it'd do a big backflip off it coming up here. That wooden one right there got lifted up and slammed. So it's a pretty pretty good sized backflip on there. So pretty solid run for 60 seconds of go. Big America is actually, uh, he does have some of the best. Oh yeah. So that's where I busted the wheel off too. Um, it actually just lost a wheel nut. Didn't break anything, but, uh, he's going to be one of the judges. Um, I did see the 8S Raminator conversion on Hybrid's channel. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I like the gas. I don't know. There's something about the sound of the gas ones that I just like. And the amount of runtime I can get on the gas one as well. I just love it. But the suspension is working pretty good. But it's all about being scale. Like these aren't trucks that you're going to rip and, you know, fly through the air like you're going to do an LMT or something else. And that's what's cool about these is the scale factor of how they run. And it honestly has enough power to backflip. In fact, I was hitting it too fast and getting too much rotation. 
which was my fear. Like all I really wanted to be able to do was backflip. And I'm sure if that hadn't popped like that, for one, it would have, uh, done it a little bit better it would allow it to ride up it but i also need to change the angle that said dirt needs to go up higher um and and lead into the the flip a little more that was very much like the todd LaDuke one at the supercross three four weeks ago but if i can do backflips with it and i can do i mean it's pretty much doing donuts with the gas as well And if you had four steer, you'd really be able to rip donuts, even with the uh, the stock motor. It's pretty much everything I want it to be. And so you're going to have to run 8S, and then you're going to have to run another battery for electric, for running your servos and everything. It, it just, it's a lot of, you can't, I mean, I don't even think about it. I just turn on the truck, stick in a 2S battery that has enough power in it to run the servos and the throttle servos and fired up and go. Um, I don't have to think, uh, I should probably put eight S worth of batteries on the charger an hour before I want to go out and run this thing. And I mean, it's like no thought at all and just stick it in you know, because it's <laughs> most of my two S batteries are the venom ones. And they still have like a 4.0 or 4.1 charge on them from the last race when I didn't use them. So, Kurt starts seeing slow motion. It looks so heavy. It is heavy. It's super heavy. Um, yeah. And like the Bari build, that one I got is 8S and it's way overpowered. And there's something more fun about the Raminator than the Bari build because of that engine. So everybody that wants me to go electric, I'm like, I got the Bari build and I've got a big truck that's electric, but it's still nothing like having that just tearing through the yard. Um, it just adds a whole nother excitement to it to run it because we backflipped the Bari build. I think that's on here as well. And actually I need to try the, um, the Raminator off that other jump that I did the backflip with the Bari build on. I didn't post it on here. Oh no, here it is. So it's still wicked good. But even though the other one doesn't have this power, it feels more scale in everything that it does to me. And that's what I like about it. The gas isn't fiddly at all, though, Riff Raffs. In fact, this only has one needle that you have to adjust. So it's pretty simple. Hey, what's going on, Jess? Kurt Darcy, the hound, the sound is half the fun. Yeah. (laughs) 
All right. Well, I'm going to get off of here. It's about an hour before the uh, RC Amigos Macho Monster Crunch stuff gets going, I believe. So I want to see that. And uh, I got a few things I got to take care of before then. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hey, if you guys have any thoughts on things that you'd like discussed on here, talked about upcoming conspiracy stuff, it doesn't have to be conspiracy stuff, could be whatever, on uh, on the live streams for Tuesday nights. I am thinking about revamping how it all goes, so um, let me know, and uh, we could do topic-based discussion stuff. Um, I, I may move into some kind of repair stuff again that I was doing before. Uh, I'm probably going to have to, especially with monster, the world finals coming up and I have two LMTs. Now I have to repair. <laughs> Plus I want to get my, um, pro, uh, freestyle proceeds all set up again, um, beforehand and hopefully, and I may have one build that I have to do complete build before then I'm hoping if it comes in the mail. So uh, all of that is coming. That's kind of where all of my attention will probably go. Will be monster trucks for this whole month. Um, now that, unless I can sneak away, I'm still hoping that something happens and I can get away to the uh, the fur baby crawl. Uh, so I can get the vanquish out on that stone mountain. Looks amazing. So, uh, but I don't plan to do any work on any of them for that event. I would just show up with the trucks and go. So, um. Yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in as always. You guys are awesome, and I uh, will catch you next time.